Thanks to popular requests from viewers of my channel, we are covering Equestive Therapeutics today. Equestive Therapeutics is a pharmaceutical company that advances and commercializes medicines to solve critical therapeutic problems and meaningfully improve people's lives. What makes Equestive Therapeutics unique is that they apply innovative drug delivery technology and their scientific expertise to actually redesigning important already existing medicines. And there is one particular area where that really matters. And that initial focus actually is on uh, medications that are treating conditions for patients with uh, central nervous system conditions, such as, for instance, epilepsy. What might make Equestive Therapeutics uh, interesting from an investment and financial point of view is that they have currently already approved products on the market and a late stage pipeline. So if you want to know more, stick around. Although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please consider your own risk profile before making any investments and research your investments wisely. Equestive Therapeutics have been around for a while, and we can see here that their initial public offering actually took place in uh, July of 2018. So let's head over to uh, Google Finance and take a look at the five-year uh, stock price evolution. The initial issuing price of the IPO was $15, as you can see here. It went up a little bit more to almost $19, and then starting in uh, November, 9 2018 we see a sharp drop in the stock price and ever since it has fluctuated as you can see here somewhere between 750 uh, 8 um, it then went even down to a little bit less than two dollars and so on in recent years so 2021 a stock price fluctuated around the five dollar uh, four three dollars etc and has come slightly back up again so just to give you a little bit of background here. So you can see the company was founded in 2004. So they have taken 14 years of development before actually taking the plunge and going IPO. At the current market valuation, the market cap of the company is 204 million US dollars. What makes Equestive Therapeutics unique in its space is its innovation and drug delivery. So Equestive are not necessarily inventing new drugs but they uh, give new life essentially to already existing drugs and improve the ease of how these medications are delivered, the comfort and use for the patients who need those medications. And this centers predominantly around the technology or delivery method that they call farm film, which uh, encapsulates medicines in a quite unique way into a yeah, film that you can use uh, in the mouth, either on the tongue, below the tongue, or in the side of the cheek. Um, and based on the characteristics that these medicines to be delivered, uh, you know, in terms of the delivery time profile, how quickly this uh, film should dissolve and actually uh, uh, transmit the medicine through diffusion into the bloodstream of the patient can be tailored to the specific needs of the active pharmaceutical ingredient and a quest of actually offer development services for companies who want to explore or reformulate existing medicines to be delivered in a very convenient way uh, through farm film. In this case, perhaps to investors who are not that familiar with the pharmaceutical industry, it may help to explain that once a drug is approved, if there are any changes being made to the drug in terms of how it is delivered, let's say pill versus a liquid form, or in this case, again, a new development modality in the form of farm film, requires again extensive testing and so-called bioavailability uh, studies as well, in order to demonstrate that the medicine uh, is diffusing into the bloodstream in the required quantity and amount in a given time frame and then induces the uh, desired effect. So it is not that straightforward 
uh, to yeah change the formulation and the delivery of existing medicines but i think he and i will illustrate this on the point of epilepsy definitely highly value added for patients who may not really be in the condition to actually take the existing medicine in the form that it is provided on the market currently today here nicely demonstrated on the website are the different locations in the mouth where the form film and ultimately medication may be placed now you may think of this all as oral delivery which is true but again on the example of epilepsy i will demonstrate to you that it very much matters if in fact the medication is buccal meaning placed in the side of the cheek if it were to be placed sublingual meaning below the tongue or actually on the tongue just to illustrate a few numbers about epilepsy the u.s epilepsy foundation provides the information 3.4 million people in the u.s live with active epilepsy 150,000 new cases are diagnosed each year and in our lifetimes one in 26 people will develop epilepsy at one point in their lives it affects all people children adults men women doesn't spare any races or ethnic groups so this is a quite common a neurological condition and that requires absolutely the access to emergency magic medications where needed in a very convenient and easy to use form factor and i will show you very illustratively that uh, equestive are working on actually a quite substantial improvement of a particular medicine that is required for one particular type of seizures there is actually a wide array of uh, seizure types that are known in the medical practice these are separated largely by a focal onset a generalized onset or unknown onset this refers to where in the brain the uh, seizure or electrical activity starts to uh, appear first um, then patients can either be aware during the seizure or unaware um, and the very big distinguishing factor are the so-called motor or non-motor symptoms meaning that uh, patients who have an epileptic seizure and intense uh, motion of their limbs and arms and so on uh, very drastic contractions intermittently again limp phases where the muscles are totally relaxed um, are generally the most dramatic forms of uh, uh, epileptic seizures seizures may occur at varying frequencies we speak of acute repetitive seizures or cluster seizures if those uh, occur very rapidly one after the other um, with sometimes the patient not really fully regaining consciousness not being able to recover and for these types of cases there is one type of medication so-called rescue medication available that needs to be administered by well bystanders or the the care uh, personnel uh, it cannot be administered by the patient because generally they are not really uh, aware or able to actually administer the medication themselves as strange as it may be to anyone not familiar with uh, epilepsy that much for cluster seizures there is actually one medicine on the market diastat which is a rectal form yeah, strangely enough of uh, benzodiazepine which is one of the medications used to well break uh, cluster seizures and to help the patient now this medicine is uh, an commercially known as uh, diazepam a rectal gel and has been approved by the FDA uh, we can see it here for use by family members and non-medical uh, caregivers it of course needs to be prescribed by a healthcare provider I think it is not much a stretch of the imagination if you now uh, envision a child or an adult with cluster seizures motor symptoms where arms and legs uh, move uncontrollably it can be very difficult for anyone in this situation to try and deliver a rescue medicine into the rectum and this is precisely where equestive uh, therapeutics are really doing a great added value by helping to reformulate um, diazepam in a different form factor that is much easier to uh, deliver in the case of cluster seizures and so here when we look at the product pipeline of equestive therapeutics you can see here 
uh, diazepam, again, uh, medication for breakthrough or cluster seizures. And you can see that this actually is beyond phase three at this point. It has actually been filed already uh, with the FDA. So this is one of the uh, development programs, actually, that is the furthest uh, advanced. You can see as we scroll down that, of course, as uh, I had mentioned initially, they already have some approved uh, medications with the farm film technology on the market. Those ones are listed uh, here. And of course, those the already approved medicines coming, of course, from uh, pharmaceutical partners are combined with the farm film and are already on the market again in this new reformulation. I expect that the same will be true for diazepam uh, because it is filed already, but as you can see, it is not yet marketed. And Equestive are, uh, have provided an update and the final results from a phase three open label safety and tolerability study using uh, the medication diazepam in the form of a buccal film for uh, chronic intermittent use in pediatric adolescent and adult subjects with uh, epilepsy. So you may wonder why is then diazepam formulated as a buccal uh, film well, first of all, you can definitely imagine that it must be much easier to develop the rescue medication in this form factor than it is as a rectal gel in comparison. And why you wouldn't use a lingual or a sublingual is simply because in cluster seizures, if there are severe motor symptoms, also the jaw uh, may be clenched shut. Or if you stick your finger in and then the seizure causes the jaws to basically jam shut, you definitely don't want to have your finger caught in between. But uh, it is very safe for a caregiver to uh, apply this film on the inside of the cheek as a buccal film because there you are out of harm's way from the teeth and any uh, yeah, involuntary contraction of the, uh, of the jaws. Let's take a really quick look at how this study was constructed. So they're testing diazepam buccal film, abbreviated DBF. And when we look here, the primary objectives of this phase three study was to assess the safety and tolerability of the buccal film administered uh, a minimum of three times to subjects with epilepsy for the treatment of seizures over a minimum of six months period. They had enrolled, we can see that uh, here, they had enrolled 167 patients in total with epilepsy, including children um, and yeah, adults as well. 150 participants passed the screening and finally were enrolled and 130 of those received at least one dose of the diazepam buccal film for breakthrough seizures, also known as cluster uh, seizures, and were included in the safety uh, analysis set. And 72%, uh, that is 108, actually completed finally the study. Overall, the safety profile looks quite promising. There were a lot of uh, treatment emergent adverse events uh, listed for these patients, 382, but only 12 of those were actually considered related to the uh, buccal film by the investigators. Uh, overall, of course, there were also uh, many serious adverse events, and those were predominantly actually the uh, seizures, which unfortunately nevertheless happen despite of the medication. Um, and unfortunately, also three uh, participants in this study uh, passed away. One was attributed to a sudden unexplained death in epilepsy, SUDEP, unfortunately an all too common reality. One death was attributed to epileptiform seizure and another one was uh, yeah, unrelated due to brain malignancy. So. Overall, the safety profile actually looks very good for the buccal film. If we look a little bit more closely at uh, some of the uh, side effects of buccal film, we see here uh, mouth swelling, gingivitis, lip injury, uh, and so on. Um, some reported uh, toothache, um, mouth hemorrhage, uh, ulceration, oral discomfort, and so on. 
but overall I would say this is really nothing that is of any concern. So the safety profile uh, looks excellent in my opinion. So then when we remind ourselves again, why is diazepam reformulated as the uh, farm film for a buckle application? Well, that is of course to increase the usability and the ease with which the medication in case of emergency can be applied. So of key interest is actually the information provided in the phase three study related to usability. You can see that a total of uh, almost 1,350 diazepam buckle films were um, used uh, by the 109 patients uh, overall. Um, we see that these patients had at least all one successful buckle insertion. Um, we also see here that 94% uh, of the film insertions were successfully placed at buccal mucosa on the first attempt, either by the study subject or with the help of a parent and caregiver. And in the majority of occasions, the film was placed successfully on subsequent uh, insertion attempts. So this is exactly what we, what we want, what we need. And this is precisely why this form of uh, delivery of the uh, medication actually is really much, much better and much superior against the uh, current standard in which the medication would have to be applied rectally. So then let's take a quick look at the licensed programs. So they have Suboxone, which is marketed since 2010, and Suboxone is a medication that is uh, prescribed for or against actually opioid dependence. Then we have uh, Zuplens, which is also marketed already since 2010. And Zuplens is a uh, medication that is used to treat symptoms of chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting also obviously a very important medicine to have in a convenient form factor. Then we have uh, Kinmobi, if I pronounce that correctly, was also approved uh, actually quite recently in 2020. And this medication is used uh, in uh, par uh, Parkinson's patients uh, during the so-called off periods. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of what that means, but Parkinson's disease is also a quite devastating neurological uh, condition. And then we have uh, Exervan, which is uh, licensed since uh, 2019. And Exervan is an approved medication uh, to address major unmet needs in ALS. And ALS, just so that you know, is uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also a very severe uh, neurodegenerative disease that uh, yeah, progresses with loss of motor neurons and therefore patients as the disease progresses can uh, actually no longer really move uh, their yeah, limbs, may have problems breathing and so on. And the final program is uh, in, in the pipeline is uh, for a uh, medicine, uh, Tadalfil, which is still subject to review evaluation uh, by the FDA. But what we can see here is the, uh, well, Tadalfil is uh, already uh, medicine on the market. It is actually medicine uh, which you may use under the name Cilialis, used and prescribed to treat uh, erectile dysfunction. So overall, quite a uh, mature pipeline. The latest products in development is uh, for uh, the delivery of epinephrine. And uh, well, this is a medication that is prescribed in case, case of severe allergies and anaphylactic shock, for instance. So you can also think of this uh, as a type of rescue medication that needs to be administered when needed very rapidly. And so therefore the convenient form factor and delivery method of uh, uh, having epinephrine in the farm film uh, delivery method is definitely a good uh, thing to have. And you can see here, depending on which one, a phase one or uh, approaching phases two currently. 
And Equestif, in addition to the positive Phase 3 clinical results we just discussed, have received more positive news from the FDA. As stated in this December 13 press release, Equestive Therapeutic have received a written response to the pre-IND submission for AQST-109, which is an epinephrine product uh, sublingual film. And this allows them to begin recruitment for the uh, f study involving pharmacokinetics and safety trial, which is called EpiFast. And they are planning to enroll the first patients by the end of the year. In addition to this, we can see here that uh, the FDA have also uh, stated that the pathway 505B2 is acceptable to them. So let's quickly take a look at what this uh, new application pathway uh, actually is. So you're probably aware that uh, any new drugs go uh, through the FDA approval through a so-called new drug application or NDA. There's also the uh, abbreviated new drug application, ANDA, and these are the two regulatory pathways of how prescription drugs can be approved and actually go to market. The NDA is also referred to as the 505B1. However, FDA in this case have um, agreed with the other pathway, which is the 501B2. So let's see what this actually is. Since epinephrine is a well-established and known treatment uh, against anaphylactic shock, for instance, it is definitely not to be considered as a new drug. And this is how the uh, 505B2 pathway actually can be applied, because this provides manufacturers who have certain types of drug with the opportunity to acquire FDA approval without performing all of the work that's required with a new drug application, such as in the case of an NDA, clinical trials, perhaps even animal uh, models and experimentation, experimentation up front. And in the case of epinephrine, that definitely is not uh, necessary. Now, this new formulation that Equestive Therapeutics are working on <clears throat> is not to be considered really a generic form in this case of epinephrine, but it is really a new, well, drug formulation. So it is a new aspect related to the indication. It's the dosage form, in fact, that uh, is a new form through the implementation of farm film. And this is how it absolutely makes sense that the FDA have confirmed that the 505B2 pathway can be applied. And this is definitely to be expected a much faster route of getting into clinical trial and ultimately then to market. And so here we are back at the Equestive press release. We can also see that uh, the AQST-109, which is this particular trial, also has the potential to meet the regulatory criteria to obtain fast-track designation, which is, well, as the name implies, another way of getting this uh, novel formulation of epinephrine quicker to market. You can see that Equestive plan to file its IND for AQSD 109 in the uh, first quarter next year, so coming up really, really soon. In addition, furthermore, Health Canada have provided clearance for the uh, Equestive crossover study, which is known EpiFast, and patient recruitment, well, has uh, begun, and the company expects the first dosing to occur actually before the end of this year. And so I agree, Equestive have lots of positive news going for them, actually. Just another quick word on anaphylaxis. Um, some of you may already know, but this is a life-threatening, potentially life-threatening uh, allergic reaction, uh, which, for instance, can be the result of a bee sting. The throat could be swelling up and make it impossible for the um, patient to breathe. And in these cases, a normal um, type of emergency medication is epinephrine, which is provided in a emergency um, auto injector to be carried around with the patient who knows they may uh, be subject to anaphylactic shock. And in the case of uh, an event where it is needed, well, then with this uh, emergency auto injector, epinephrine needs to be injected. AQST 109 provides the epinephrine in the uh, farm film and to be supplied sublingually. So the convenience factor here is absolutely key. 
and also the convenience in terms of carrying this emergency medication around. Um, you can see here that the product is similar in size to a postage stamp and weighs less than an ounce and begins to dissolve on contact. In comparison to an auto injector, which is definitely much bulkier and much larger, therefore uh, less likely perhaps to be carried around in the wallet or you know in everyday uh, life situations away from home, I can definitely see how the reformulation of uh, epinephrine and AQST 109 will very positively really impact patients who may need epinephrine in case of emergency. I really hope you learned some valuable information about Equestive Therapeutics and their pipeline. If you enjoyed this content, and especially if it has been useful for your own investment journey, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel if you have not already.